Hi, this is Brother Tony, and this is part two of mathematical models that we find in section 3.5. Now, the first part that we went over was talked about if you were given data points, and how do you get a linear model from those data points. And we went through that in part one. Now, part two, we're going over two examples. One is if you were given basically two points, and the assumption that you have to make then that this is a linear model meaning that two points will define that straight line. If it's not linear, you can't model it. So let's begin. And I give you this first problem. Now, if you go to page 94 of your book, you'll see it exactly the same way. So driving home problem. You drive home from the football game. And just as a side note, Forrester is actually Australian. So obviously, number of kilometers you're away from home depends on the number of minutes you've been driving. So really, he's talking about soccer although there is Aussie football. What does this have to do with the problem? Not a lot, but I thought that you might find it interesting. So let's assume the distance varies linearly with time. Suppose that you're 11 kilometers from home when you are driving for 10 minutes, 8 kilometers from home when you are driving for 15 minutes. So the first part, it says, what are the variables? So part A, define the variables for distance and time. Well, distance... Is that the independent or the dependent variable? And I will give you that. If you have something relating to time, time is an independent variable, then distance must be a dependent variable. So time is on the horizontal axis, distance is on the vertical axis. So we'll define distance as d, and we'll find, define time as t. Now, you probably know my graphing skills aren't the greatest, so guess what? I'm going to stop this, drop in a picture that I took, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here's a graph taken right from page 94. Two points. This point would be 10, 8, so at 10 minutes, 8 kilometers away. And this point would be 15 for 15 minutes, comma, 8. Okay, so what this means is that would be 10, comma, 11. So at 10 minutes, 11 kilometers away. At 15 minutes, 8 kilometers away. Okay, let's continue with this. Okay, so the second thing we want to do is we want to find that particular equation expressing distance in terms of time. So two points, what does that do? Let's find the slope. And then what do we do after the slope? We find b. Okay, two points, I find the slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The slope is negative three-fifths. After the slope, you plug it into our slope-intercept form. I use the first two points, 10 and 11. So 11 equals negative 3 fifths times 10 plus b. b equals 17. So our mathematical model is y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 17. We could also say the function of x equals negative 3 over 5, x plus 17. Either one. Remember, a function, for every value of x, there's one and only one value of y. Okay. So now, predict the distance from home when you have been driving for 20, 25, and 30 minutes. So, in this case, let me go to a next slide. Now, one of the things I miss about recording this versus when I'm doing this in front of you as a class is you tend to catch my mistakes. I went with the slope-intercept form, you know, the y2 minus y1, etc., but we're using the terms t for time, the independent variable, and d for distance, the dependent variable. So our linear equation should really be d equals negative three-fifths times t plus 17. Or we would say the function of t equals negative three-fifths times t 
plus 17. Okay, so at 20 minutes, when time is 20, so that's negative 60 divided by 5, so that's negative 12 plus 17, looks like distance is 5 kilometers. At 25, that's negative 15, so it looks like 2. And then at 30, what do we get here? Negative 1, right? 30 divided by 5 is 6 times negative 3 is 8, negative 18 plus 17, negative 1. And we'll see, does that actually make sense? So let's talk about this. So what is the distance intercept equal? What does it represent in the real world? Let's stop and think about that. So the question that I asked is, what is the distance intercept equal to? So the vertical axis is D, the distance intercept. That's 17. What does that mean? Hopefully you said at time zero, when they're just starting out, they're 17 miles away from home. So then the other thing is, what is a time intercept equal? Well then, at time equal to 28, when it's 28 minutes, where are they? Distance is zero, so they're at home. So in what domain does this linear function give you a reasonable answer? The domain, the x values that make sense. So the domain would be from zero to 28. Because at 29, we'd be going into negative territory. And we don't, so at 29, we'd be negative distance away from home. Doesn't make sense since this is a scalar model. And time is always positive. So keep that in mind. So the domain goes from 0 to 28. The final thing, let's take a look at the slope. The slope is negative three-fifths, and it is distance in kilometers divided by minutes. And since the slope is negative, it means the more time elapses, the less distance there is until you're home. Okay, let's try a second example. Okay, second example. A local donut establishment charges 20 cents for each donut. I would love to know where that local donut establishment is. Plus a one-time charge of 15 cents for the box, the service, etc. Okay, so what do we really have here? What is 20 cents? If this is a linear model, what does 20 cents represent? The rate of change. Or the slope, right? How much for every additional donut is being charged? So slope equals 20. Then what is that 15 cents? That 15 cents is the y-intercept, right? So when the number of donuts is zero, they still charge 15 cents, whether you buy anything or not. So the y-intercept will say b equals 15. Okay, so now... What is our equation? We will say the dependent variable is price, and we'll say that is in cents. The independent variable then is the number of donuts, or D. So P equals 20 D plus 15. So the price is going to be in cents. So, Is this a linear function? Absolutely. First of all, for every value of D, there is one and only one value of P. And number two, we see a constant rate of change. Slope is constant. So how much for a dozen donuts? Well, that's pretty easy, right? So when the independent variable is 12. What's the dependent variable? So the price equals 20 times 12 plus 15. 12 times 2 is 24. Add a 0 there. 240 plus 15. So the price in cents 
is two fifty five or two dollars and fifty five cents. You can go backwards. How many donuts would there be in a price in a box price at three fifty five? So three fifty five equals twenty D plus fifteen. So minus fifteen from both sides. 340 equals 20D. Divide both sides by 20. And what do we get? Looks like 17. 17 donuts in that box. What is the domain of this? A reasonable domain. We could say it starts at zero. But would you, if you buy zero donuts, what is it saying? It's saying that you are going to pay 15 cents for nothing. So the domain would probably start at one donut and then probably go, if you just, for a box, maybe 12. But you could go up as far as you wanted. Okay, so those are really the two examples that we have for linear functions. All that else, everything else is pretty much commentary. So tomorrow we'll come into class. Please make sure you have your good notes taken. We'll get to work. We'll understand this and move forward. Okay, thanks.